Good morning. I am retired CTACS April Mallet. I am full of bad jokes. Gratuitous laughter is highly authorized and always encouraged. Yes. To my right is my other brain cell. She keeps me straight. She has my bail money. Be nice. Retired Fleet Mass Chief Suze Whitman. Give it up for Suze. We're going to be talking about our ladies in the Navy. Oh, yeah. Okay? So, during World War I, who was our first female chief? Perfectus. What's her middle name? Perfectus. Perfectus. It just rolls, and it's kind of cool to say. Have fun with it. Have fun. History's not dead. History's not just dead guys and dates. There's a story. Find the story. Think of the word history. What's the last five letters? Story. Each and every one of us have a story. Share. Share. All right? So, World War I, we had Chief Walsh. At the end of World War I, the gentleman said, Ladies, thank you very much for your service. Go home and make babies. Bad joke, or true, it is laughing. <laughs> yeah. All right, so... Life was grand in the Navy without the ladies. Then, storm clouds of war, okay. What happened 7 December 1941? Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor, okay. 30 July 1942, they authorized ladies back into the Navy, okay. We were called WAVES. Do you know what the acronym WAVES breaks out to? That's what you got me for. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to break it down. We're going to learn together. Fair? What's the W? Very good. What's the A? Not auxiliary. Accepted. Isn't that something you all want? Ah. Okay. They were not auxiliary. They were full up round. The ladies, our waves, got the GI Bill. They were not auxiliary. Okay, what's the V? Volunteer. Volunteer. What's the E? Enlisted. Not enlisted. Emergency. Emergency. Not enlisted, we had WAVES officers. They went up to the highest grade was Lieutenant Commander. Okay, what's S? Service. Service. Okay, let's put it all together. All right, what's the W? A, B, E, S. Service. Very good. That's what the WAVE, that's what the acronym WAVE's broke out to. Okay, they were women reservists. Okay, two-thirds of the Navy during World War II were reserve forces. We could not have won the war without them. All right, I have different uniforms through the years. These are my uniforms. They are not, they are not the museums. Because they're mine, you get to see them up a little closer. They're not behind plexiglass. All right? So this is the beginning of the war. April, how do you know it's at the beginning of the war? Flat black buttons. Very simple. Very flat. You promise to be nice? I promise. Will you, will you walk this around and let everybody see it? Thank you. So that's the beginning of the war. Oh, no, I am not going to have him model it. So... This is the middle of the war. We have a little more plastic. They're raised buttons. <coughs> this is the Navy SEAL. Okay, go ahead and walk that around. So we go from flat to raised buttons. To gold shinies. What's happening in our war? What's happening? What do you think? We go from flat to raised to gold shinies. What do you think's going on? More I'm sorry? More no. What's going on in the war? We're winning. We're winning. Why? Because there's women serving. I like that. The best answer yet. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Give her my card. Yeah. What? No, I said, what did you what did she say? Because women were in the, no. were in the Navy. <laughs> I like that answer. Okay, so during World War II, everybody in the home front recycled like crazy. 
We think we recycle with our cute little blue bins. We ain't got <coughs> nothing compared to that generation. Nothing. They recycled everything. So just looking at our uniforms, at our buttons of our ladies' uniforms, we know what's going on in the war. Flat, a little bit more plastic, okay, and then gold. They use the metal for bullets and tanks. We are winning the war. And we can see it in our uniforms. And it's really, really cool. Okay. So, gentlemen, we know your uniforms. I'm going to put you on the spot. So, what's different from the dress blue uniform that I would wear or an E6 would wear, female, and this? The collar. Okay. So, that's the Waves insignia. Okay. Something glaring. And the girls, are, the girls are going to instantly get this. Talk to me. Buttons are on the other side? Nope. The size of the, uh, nope. Oh. Nope. Oh, so, uh, you know what? Talk to me. That's the beauty of this. There's no wrong answer. It's not a correct answer. Is there like the crease of the... No pockets on the side? Nope. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Do you know? The flaps on the pocket. Okay, we... Okay, E6 and below. I'm looking for something specific. The gold buttons. Silver is for E6 and below. Gold is for chief and officer. During World War II, they all were gold. We were only authorized X amount of ladies in the Navy at the time. It was smart. It was economical. Okay? And the only things that have really, really changed other than the buttons, we don't have the, the markers of the waves and the, the, the pocket flaps are a little different, okay? Our dress blue uniform was designed by a couture designer. Do you guys know what couture is? Not a clue. It is high-end fashion. High-end. Finding these uniforms is very, very hard because what the ladies did is after the war, they repurposed everything. Again, they were, they, recycling was their life. And they didn't call it recycling. It was the war effort. So they got home from the war. This collar came off. It was a beautiful jacket. They took off the rating badge. They steamed it. They changed the buttons out, the skirt. You couldn't tell was a military skirt unless you wore it. They had an evening out attire. They had church. They had weddings. They had funerals. And it looked sharp. It looked sharp. Mainbacher was a couture designer who designed the ladies' dress blue uniform. And it was also the spars. That was the Coast Guard equivalent. This is a new acquisition. This was the working uniform. This is from 1943. She never wore it because she would have had her rating badge on this. There was a dress very similar to this that it went over. The dress had rounded collars, not pointed collars. This is from the 50s. Okay, so this is how it was worn. All right, through the 50s, this was the working uniform. Do you see the acreage on this? Where's my Airedales? Not you. What's her rating? I don't know that one. That's not an HM15 rating. <laughs> Is it? Oh. Ah, share with the class. Air traffic controller. controller. Miss Pauline wore this dress. I met her 10 years, oh, good, yeah, 10 years ago. And she passed it down to me. Again, do you see the acreage on this dress? An air traffic controller in the 50s. They trained to fight, fight to win, but they were ladies first. 
boot camp for our ladies in World War II, the first two weeks was finishing school. You had to have your hair a certain way. Your nails had to be done a certain way. Your stockings, the seams had to be straight. Okay, it's wartime. There's a silk shortage. So what did the ladies do? You didn't have stockings. So what the ladies did is they used their eyeliner and they drew seams up the back of their legs. Army seams straight. <laughs> Gratuitous laughter, come on. <laughs> Thank you. They were ladies first waves always. Same with Miss Pauline, even in the 50s when they authorized the ladies to come back. Because at the end, 31 December 1946, would the, Navy t would the gentleman tell the ladies, go home and make, make babies. 1948, they brought them back full up round. There were still jobs that needed to be done. Okay, so they weren't just women in reserve. They came in full up round in 48. In the 50s, this was the working uniform. She was an air traffic controller right here in Norfolk. So, train to fight, fight to win, correct? Yeah. They did the same thing. They were working on a new radar to get her pilots home. She had perfect comms, life was grand, radar's working. Okay, so what do the controllers do? What any good controller does, he causes mayhem. What's he do? Pulls the plug. No radar. She's telling me this story at the Marriott when we had our, uh, our convention. And she's looking around. She goes, but I was ready because I was trained and I knew what I was doing. He was my pilot. He was my responsibility. I had positive comms before the radar went down and I had plan B. And she's looking around. It's just her and I out in the passageway. I said, okay. She goes, but I had my BAS. And she bends down, grabs up an imaginary thing, puts it in her hand. And I said, your BAS. My big ass spotlight. She said the word ass. They were ladies first waves always. Okay. She goes, I had my spotlight. I had positive comms with my pilot. I was bringing him home safe. Okay, she's outside of the big bubble. It's springtime in Virginia. What happens in springtime in Virginia? We get some breezes. Here she is standing out, outside, has positive comms, getting her pilot home. She goes, the breezes start. I'm tucking in the acreage of this dress in between my legs. I still have positive comms. Life is grand. He's coming home to his family. The wind's going. Uh, and I'm still looking like a lady. <laughs> that is how she described wearing that dress to me. And it's cool that I get to share it with you. Okay? Did I tell you history is not just dead guys and dates? Yes. There's a story. I get into this and I forget what I say. Vietnam era, this is the dress white uniform. Yes, still gold buttons. Yes, she is a third class. Oh yeah, this purse. This purse is required. It is a required uniform item. The lady that gave me this outfit went to XOI because she forgot the purse in their barracks room. It was a required uniform item. How dare you not have it? It's a very nice purse. Into the 70s, this was the other working uniform, pinstripe blues. You starch the crap out of it, the buttons come off, you sit in the once and it gets wrinkled. But it's very, very comfortable. Oh wait, is this an overblouse? Have we seen this somewhere before? <laughs> Do you think our uniform board looks at our previous uniforms and said, oh, we've done that before? Okay, kind of cool how we can see through history our uniforms. Okay, so in World War II, something really, really bad happened and we lost almost an entire family. What happened? Sullivan's. Sullivan's. Who's the sixth Sullivan? Genevieve. Who? Genevieve. Who's Genevieve? Sister. Who knew that Genevieve was a wave? Oh, Genevieve was a wave. <coughs> Go ahead and pass that around. She was a wave. She joined the Navy after the family got the missing in action telegram. Yeah, yeah. She got her family's approval. She got their blessing. She went to Bronx, New York. That was our uh, Waves Boot Camp. It, they took over Hunter College, and the ladies called it affectionately USS Hunter. She got her training there, got her 
her uh, lady training, finishing school, and they turned her into a, a waves recruiter. She was very, very effective at what she does. When you see the picture, she's pretty. She put dads at ease that are letting their girls, their little girls, join our Navy. Okay? The Six Sullivan was Genevieve. She was a wave. Kind of cool. They were waves. Then they changed the name into the 70s, late 70s, to WINS, Women in Naval, naval Service. <coughs> to WAS, Women on Board Ship, and now we're sailors. So there was a recruiting poster in the early 40s before the ladies joined. Before the ladies joined. Okay, gentlemen, join the Navy and ride the waves. It was a destroyer. It was a battleship. They spent a lot. The artwork, if you see an original World War II poster of one of these dreadnoughts just crashing down in the waves and you see the spray. During that time, it was what was needed. It was a pictorial of what we needed our boys to do. We were at war. So, our ladies are authorized to come in in 42, and they're called waves. So, when I seen something, this is a felt that was probably in somebody's locker. It says, join the Navy and ride the waves. Why are you shaking your head? Come on, come on. Need new advertisement. Need new advertisement, why? That escalated quickly. That escalated quickly. Are you saying that I went ugly early? I guess it sounded good before. I guess it sounded good. Why? Makes sense to ride the waves. Exactly. Originally, it was not meant to ride the girls. Free, the reason the ladies were authorized in was to free a man to go to sea. Okay? The gentlemen joined the Navy to ride the waves, the big ships, the waves. Okay? Double entendre? Oh, you bet. <laughs> you bet. So, when I came in in the early 80s, I was a win, women in naval, naval service. So, when I had the gentlemen, <clears throat> I use that term loosely, Say, join the Navy and ride the waves or get blown by the winds. <laughs> Bingo! <laughs> that one, yeah, not so much. Not so much. Okay, so that was in the 80s. When I came in, we still did not have our first female command master chief. Okay? I'm segueing to Suze now because she's going to pick up this stuff. All right, hey, good morning, everybody. Good okay, so what I'm going to talk about are trailblazers, and why? Because I retired as a Fleet Master Chief, and I would not be here today if it wasn't for those that have gone before me. So whether you're my brother or you're my sister, you have to stop and think who blazed your trail, all right? And I say kind of pay homage, so I'm, I get to pay back, all right? The first female CMC was who? Does anybody know? Anna Dervartani. Oh, she was the first, okay, let me ask you this. Who was the first female master chief? Anna Bartania. Anna Bartania. Do you know what her uh, rating was? Yum. Oh. Yum. How many of them are in the group? Why do I ask that question? Because I'm an old yeoman. <laughs> 20 years I spent as a yeoman, okay? Got a little bit of knowledge of your rating. Yeah. All right? Hey, next one. Who was the first command master chief? T-shirt, 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 T-shirt. There's a T-shirt. T-shirt. There's a T-shirt on the table. T-shirt. Janice Ayers. No. No, no, no. Oh, I see. Janice Ayers. 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 Group of females to go on board an aircraft carrier mm -hmm. to deploy. That was Dwight D. Eisenhower, or I like Ike, for those of you guys who understand. I like she was the first sailor of the year. She was the first female sailor of the year. Okay. Who was our first 
Force, female Force Master Chief. Jacqueline De La Rosa. Man, Jacqueline see. De La Rosa. She also became Sorry. the first Fleet Master Chief at U.S. Fleet Forces Command. Pretty big job, right? Who was our first four-star admiral? Oh, come on. Oh. First four-star admiral. Admiral. Oh, admiral. She's not on that shirt. She ain't on that shirt, babe. Come on. Oh. Hey, her claim to fame was collect uh, was uh, capturing the pirates, right? Come on. Come on. Uh, yeah. What is it? It's uh, 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 Admiral Michelle Howard. Bingo. Admiral Michelle Howard. All right. It is still morning. So good morning. It's just a little bit of time since our last one. As you can tell, I'm now svelte. I can even take a PT test, but trust me, I'm not going to. When we left off, we were talking about Admiral Howard. She was our first female four-star admiral. How cool is that? She was not only our first female four-star, she was our first female African-American four-star. So there's one thing that's really unique about her. Do you know that she was out of uniform for about two to three weeks? April, she was out of uniform? How is that possible? She's a four-star. She was a four-star. They didn't have female four-star shoulder boards. They had to have them made. So, you know, somebody was on pins and needles for a little bit of Vanguard trying to get those things made up. But it's kind of cool that even as far as we've come, there's still little hiccups and speed bumps in the road. It is what it is. But what's really, really cool is yes, she was our first African-American female four-star. During World War II, our gentlemen of color in the Navy were only authorized to do two jobs. They were only authorized to be stewards and cooks. What about our waves? I have proof. We have an African-American lady. What is she doing? She's inspecting an aircraft engine you know, I'm blind, for inspecting an engine for a Wildcat fighter aircraft, U.S. Naval Training School, Bronx, New York, 1945. But she's, she's African American. That's right. Even though our ladies of color we didn't pigeonhole them. They had the aptitude, they had the ability, they did the job. That's what I love about our waves. They wanted to make sure that it didn't matter what your background was. You did the job. It's really, really cool. Admiral Howard had to wait a few weeks for her four stars. And we have a lady of color during World War II inspecting inspecting an aircraft engine. So that ties into something else. Our insignia that we wore on our uniforms, you see it on the dress blues, that on the, on the dress blue lapel, it had the um, gold fouled anchor. It also had the propeller. So when the ladies were designing our uniform, they wanted to ensure that both sides of the Navy were represented. You will see a sterling silver, and this is original, you know me, I have originals. Sterling silver prop, it is a propeller, it's an aircraft prop. It went on an aircraft. Over it is kind of tarnished, but it is supposed to be a gold fouled anchor. Because you wanted to make sure that you represented both sides of the Navy. We had ladies that were in the aviation branch, so that's the aircraft prop. You had ladies that were in the seaman branch. That is the anchor. So it's really, really cool. They wanted to make sure that this was part of our uniform. When the ladies wore their covers, the Love Forever bucket cover, you will see that it is the Waves insignia. Then when they made Chief, they replaced it with that beautiful gold fouled anchor. So it's really cool to see how we have progressed. 
from World War II, Admiral Howard, today. So we went from waves to winds, women in naval service, to was women on board ship, to sailors. Look how far we have come. Sky's the limit. So enjoy your day. Thank you for your time and have fun.